Hello friends and welcome to this space. Let's light a light. Easy for me to do. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And it is in him and his light that we trust. So uh, it's Monday and I'm coming off of a very full weekend, so I'm feeling tired today. And we'll see where this goes. I don't have anything super prepared. Um, but just to share a little bit about where my life is, and maybe you'll connect to it a bit. And then the scripture that basically it exploded in, in my life this morning. Um, when I was gathered in another group. So I want to share that with you as well. So, exhausted today. Um, not as exhausted as my daughter, but we'll get to that. Um, my daughter was actually here for the past week as she was preparing to move. And on Saturday, we had the opportunity to go see my son who is at Dickinson College. It was family weekend. So my husband and I, my daughter and her boyfriend all went uh, to Dickinson for the day and thoroughly enjoyed it. That was great. Um, and then yesterday, we were going to take, or did take, my daughter um, to JFK Airport in Queens, New York. And on the way, stopped in the city in Manhattan to um, see my other daughter and drop off first daughter's um, cat because she's going, I should just use names, right? Okay, Rachel is the one who's leaving and Andrea is the one who's going to take care of the cat for the next two years. So we took Rachel then after being with my daughter Andrea for a while in the city, took her out to uh, the airport, um, thought I haven't been traveling during COVID so my recollection of dropping people off at the airport is that I can go into the building and I can say goodbye and spend some time with the person until they go through security. Well, apparently that's not the case anymore. Now it's nope, due to COVID, unless there is some specific reason that you need to be in there with the person who's traveling, you're not allowed in. And I guess a really hug you know, a loving hug and tear-filled goodbye is not adequate reason for going in. So, anyway, um, that was a little bit chaotic yesterday evening at the airport. Um, but she got on her way, and I'm very excited for her and, and hope that things go well for her there. Um, and then we had to drive home, right? And didn't get home till about 11 o'clock last night, which isn't terrible, but it's late for me. <laughs> So feeling physically tired, um, mentally a little bit tired because there have been a lot of logistics to work through this past week or so, um, and emotionally, you know, I'm just in a tired place. It, it tugs at your heartstrings when your kids go off, going off to do great, wonderful, exciting things, but going off nonetheless. So here's the thing that spoke to me this morning and restored my soul in a clergy group that I met with this morning. And it's Psalm 126. So I invite you now to listen for and to hear God's word to you. What is the invitation to you in this time, in this place, through these words? When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. And we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping 
bearing the seed for sowing shall come home with shouts of joy carrying their sheaves. I'm going to read it one more time. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, may, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. The word of the Lord. So many life-filled words popped out at me this morning as this psalm was being read to me. The word dream. How much time do you spend dreaming? Not, not necessarily when you're asleep, but when you're awake. How often do you imagine how things are, how things could be different? Dreaming about God's invitation to you in this time, in this place, and how you might act on that. Other words, laughter, a mouth full of laughter, and joy, shouts of joy, great things, rejoiced, again, shouts of joy. Even those who go out weeping, even those who go out weeping, bear some sort of seed that may produce, as Jesus would say later on, a hundredfold. And those sheaves, those grains could be brought in as the harvest. So in any situation we find ourselves, whether it is a time of weeping, it's a time when resources have dried up and you're feeling empty inside, it's also a time for dreaming. It's a time for hoping. It's a time for laughter. It can be a time for joy. It's a time for hope that whatever this time and space looks like, we trust our present into God's hands and know that the future, trust that the future will bring a great harvest and great rejoicing. So I'm sharing those words of hope and trust and joy with you today. And may you rejoice and may you dream boldly.